Hello again. Thanks for being with us. I'm Jones Angel. He's the head coach of the Tar Heels, Larry Fedora. Let's talk a little Tar Heel football. And coach, I have to imagine the, the aftermath of the Virginia Tech one difficult, obviously due to the result, but a lot of positives in that game as well, just in the way that your team played for a large majority of the evening. How do you balance the good with the not so good when you're finishing things up on that one? Well, it's, uh, you know, it was, it, those are the games that kind of gut you from inside out. I mean, you, you, uh, you hurt so much for the players because they put so much into it. They believed and they uh, worked extremely hard and we just uh, came up short because we didn't, we didn't make a play when we needed to make a play. And, and, uh, but there were so many positives. I mean, on special teams, on offense and defense, uh, it, there, there, were, there were some really strong glimpses of how this football team can play. Defensively, Coach, saved the final drive where Virginia Tech made some, some big plays and credit to them. It, it felt like one of your better performances on that side of the football. What do you feel like you guys did well on defense? Yeah, I think uh, up front we were really good. I thought our four guys up front uh, got pressure the entire night. They were, they were really good about the run. Uh, I thought our linebackers played well. Uh, the majority of our secondary played really well. Uh, I thought uh, they just did a nice job overall and played hard as a team. I think, you know, we, uh, we put them in a tough situation on the very first series and uh, we gave up a touchdown there and I think they shut them down for the next seven series in a row. Uh, you know, and so they, they played extremely well. Got into the red zone seven times in this game. Coach scored on five, but just one of those was a touchdown. How do you improve those numbers? Where did you see the breakdowns in that area? Yeah, we, we had, we had uh, numerous breakdowns in that area, whether it would have been uh, a penalty. We had a holding call on a, uh, on a touchdown that was called back. We had uh, uh, a, uh, you know, we got down there one time and we had a false start. Uh, you know, and so we put ourselves behind the chains and, and we're, you know, we, we either have to show that we're tough enough to overcome those things or we can't put ourselves in that position. And we just got to finish. We got to finish. You, 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 there's no difference in, in how you execute out in the field and how you execute in the red zone. We just got to finish. How frustrating is it? You kind of pull the trigger at the quarterback spot, go to a younger player there. He suffers an injury in the game, and, and now you're kind of back to square one and trying to figure out what you want to do there. Well, I mean, uh, that's, uh, you know, injuries are part of the game. I mean, so uh, it's just the, that's just the, the world we live in. And so, you know, our guys understand that. They know. I was proud of the way that uh, Nate handled it, the entire situation. And, you know, that's one thing about that position. I mean, you're, there, there's only one of them on the field, and you're, you're an ankle away from being the guy always. And so, you know, I was proud that he was totally prepared, just like I thought he would be. And, uh, you know, he was ready to go. And, uh, we'll, you know, the next guy will be ready to go also. Coach, Michael Carter has a career high in yards, but he also had one of the bigger negative plays of the game with a fumble on the goal line. As a player, how, or as a coach, how do you try and help the player balance that out and learn from that experience? Well, nothing changes. You're, you're, you're always pointing out the good things that, uh, that they do, and then you point out the negative things that they do. They, they, they've got to learn from both, you know, and uh, Mike will take that and he will learn from it and he will be a better running back and a better person because of it. He will be. I know how he is. A couple more things, Coach. Patrice Rene had one of his better games, maybe his best game as a Tar Heel. Tell us a little bit about Patrice, what he brings to that cornerback position. Well, he's the longest corner we got. I mean, he's, uh, you know, 6'2". And, I mean, he's got great length, great arm length, uh, all those things that make it really tough for a, uh, a receiver. And he, you know, he's a guy that's starting to feel more comfortable in everything that we do. And he's, uh, he's shown the ability to be able to make plays, and now he's making them. Let's flip the page to Syracuse coach going up for the first time since the Orange joined the ACC. Carolina and Syracuse will face off in football. Tell us a little bit about the opponent coming up this weekend. Yeah, well, first of all, Dino's got those guys playing extremely hard. They've got a lot of confidence. He's got a great quarterback in the, the Dungy kid who's a really gritty, tough, uh, you know, he can throw it and he will pull it down and run and he's not going to slide. He, he, he's, he's uh, you know, and I think all of their team feeds off of him, you know, which they should. I mean, who wouldn't want to play for a guy like that? And then defensively, I think they're really good up front. Uh, I, I think those guys get a lot of pressure. They've got two bookends that are both have six sacks, and uh, you know, which which is really good at this point in the in the season. And uh, they'll be fresh coming off their open week. Carolina and Syracuse again, first time since the Orange joined the ACC. These two will face off on the football field. It's a 12. 20 kick on the road for the Tar Heels. Radio Wives will be on the air at 11 a.m. Eastern time for that one. Thanks so much for being with us.